Hello and welcome to Searching and Filtering Layers. Now this is a super handy skill to have, especially when you create documents that have a ton of layers and a lot of different types of layers. So in this example, we're going to create a bunch of different types of layers and show you how to search through those layers. So let's go ahead and open up. We're in Chapter 2, Section 11, Searching and Filtering Layers.jpg. All right, let's open that up and hit F for full screen. So as of now, we just have a background layer. So first of all, we need to start doing something. Let's create a new layer here. And I'm going to use our spot healing brush tool. There we go. To just do a little bit of cleanup. OK. So spot healing brush tool to the rescue. Let's clean some of this stuff up here. So this is just a really great tool for blemish removal. Basically, it uses content aware. Uh, there we go. Content aware fill to try to find the information that should be in that place. So it's really great if someone's got blemishes or there's a piece of trash in the background you want to remove. The spot healing brush tool is a really, really great tool for removing those little details. So you can see, just paint it over those and they're gone. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with our search. Now, at the very top, we're at kind. We already showed you how this works. We have a few different types of layers. So we have our pixel layers. Now let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to hue slash saturation. We'll bring our saturation down. Okay. There we go. Bon appetit. There we go. Let's go back to our move tool and center this. Perfect. And let's see, what else do we need? We need a shape layer. So we've got a rectangle tool here. All right, our stroke, I want this to be white. There we are. Let's just increase the size of this. All right, that looks good. And I need one smart object as well. All right, let's duplicate our text. All right. That's supposed to say by Flern. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I know how to spell. Good job. Cool. So we got a little magazine cover that we're working on here. So this is like a pretty typical example of like, hey, I'm just trying to do something in Photoshop. Uh, now I got a bunch of different layers. Let's see if we can find what we need to actually find. So we're going to start off with our search here and we're going to search by kind. So pixel layers, these are going to be like the layers where I remove the crumbs as well as our background layer. Okay. Next we have our adjustment layers. These are where we uh, made any adjustments. In this case, we're making it black and white. Our text layers, there we go. We have a shape layer, the rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this by Flern into a smart object. So if I click on smart object, we've got something there as well. So that's the basis of our search here with our um, here within our layers. Now we do have some more advanced options with our search as well. So let's go ahead and show you guys how those work. So let's click on our little drop down menu. And our first option is by name. So here we can just start typing here. And I can see one of my layers is called by Flern. Right, so if I just type in Flurn, there we go, our layer shows up and I can start working on that layer. So if you're diligent about naming your layers or your groups, it's gonna really pay off to search with the name filter. Now next is for effect. So if I go to my effect, you can see you can search for things like bevel and boss or maybe a drop shadow. In this case, we don't have any of those things. So let's go ahead and add one. I've got Bon Appetit here. I'm gonna double click and we're gonna go down to drop shadow beautiful drop shadow. Oh, such a nice one. There we go. And we can go down to effect and we can say, hey, search by drop shadow. And there we go. So we can see that Bon Appetit, in fact, does have a drop shadow. It's very subtle, but it has it. So it's showing up here in our search. Okay. Next, we can go down to mode, which will actually be our different blending modes. So let's go ahead and take this uh, rectangle that's around our image. And I'm going to change the layer blend mode to overlay. There we go, we got a little funky effect now. And we can search by different modes. So if we want to see everything that is in the overlay blend mode, here we have our rectangle that's in the overlay blend mode. 
Now, obviously, if I just put this back to a normal blending mode, it will not show up in our search. We can go ahead and turn our search off and it will result in everything. Or you can just change this back to kind and it's going to show everything again. Next, we have the option to search by different attributes. If it's visible, if it's invisible, if it's got a mask, if it's clipped. So let's go here to our attribute and we can choose visible. Okay, perfect. We can choose whether it's clipped. So if we have any layers that are clipped to other layers, if a layer has a layer mask, which this hue saturation does, perfect. We can see with a vector mask, which is basically a layer mask used with the pen tool so to create vectors. We can see if anything has layer effects. So in this case, this does have a drop shadow. That's a layer effects. And we can see if anything has advanced blending, which is our luminosity blending, also known as blend if, which we showed you guys earlier. And then of course you can search the opposites. So we can choose like not locked, which would be everything or not clipped, which would be just about everything as well. All right, let's go back up to visual, visible, and let's go down to our color. So in this case, everything has not been colored, but let's say if we did decide we want our text, there we go, we want to make sure that those are both red. There we go, let's go ahead and go back to kind here. So I've made both of my text layers red, so obviously we can search by color. So let's go down here to color and we're going to choose red and here we go. Everything that turns the results red is going to show up. So next we have the option to search by smart object and there are a bunch of different types of smart objects. You can actually link smart objects to the cloud or to external files. In this case, we just created a regular smart object. So to find that, we just go down to smart object and we click on this last little guy here. This is just a regular smart object. And there we can see, here's our smart object waiting for us. Okay, now we have selected is our last option here. Let's just turn that off or on so we could click on a couple selected. And especially if you're working with a pretty complicated uh, image, if you just want to see the stuff that you've actually selected, you can just change this selected, go ahead and turn that back on and you're good to go. And last we have our artboard, which I already showed you guys in our last section, <coughs> excuse me, how to work with artboards. Again, I've used artboards just a couple of times. I use them to make actually web ads because you can create a few different sizes of artboards and then save them all out as ads. That's one really great use of a, that I've discovered for artboards, but this will actually allow you to search for your artboards in your images as well. Well, that's pretty much it for searching and filtering your layers. Basically, the tool is just there to make it easier to find the layer that you're looking on. So if you're like, oh, what was that layer? I made it like 10 minutes ago. I didn't name it. Oh, but I did put a bevel and emboss on there. Then you can just search by any layer that has a bevel and emboss and it's much easier to find that layer. Again, if you're working with five or six layers, not a really that big of a problem, but sometimes our layer count gets to 50, 75, 100 layers. These search tools come in really, really handy. Join us in our next section, which is going to finish out chapter two, layers and tools. We're going to show you how layers and tools interact with each other and some cool tips and workarounds using your layers.